Okay, well, uh, I'm going <clears> to <throat> refer to a couple of more figures from the uh, from the monograph in Chapter 2, uh, describing, summarizing what we've been talking about um, in terms of uh, phase definition. This is a an attempt to plot in a three-dimensional space pressure, volume, and temperature of a pure of a pure compound. And if we just take as an example here this being water, we can try to identify a little bit what uh, what we see on this figure. Um, I'm going to stay away from the solid uh, the solid part of the phase diagram and, and stick with where we have gas and liquid. Um, and uh, from this from this figure here, we've got um, uh, a point here that I'm going to say is uh, connecting, this line here is connecting two conditions at the same pressure. It's a little bit hard to see that from this three-dimensional image, but basically we're going to say that along this pressure here, we've got um, one atmosphere, okay? Let's say that that is pressure of one atmosphere. <clears throat> and this is going to be a volume. Of course, this volume is, is less than this volume. The temperature along, along this line is also going to be um, at a constant of 100 degrees C or 212 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, I believe is the boiling temperature of water. So along this line we have a constant pressure and a constant temperature. And this volume here, which it could be a volume, we might say that we've got, for example, one mole in, in this uh, diagram so that it's the same as molar volume. Basically this is the volume. Um, and the lower volume would be that of the saturated liquid. That is the water in our cup of coffee, in a sense. It's the boiling water. And this other volume will be the, the volume of the vapor saturated, of the saturated vapor. So this is our volume of saturated liquid. And this one here is the volume of the saturated vapor. And because it's at one atmosphere, we know that approximately this is about a thousand times larger than this volume because the density ratio is about a thousand. And on this figure, as we increase the temperature going in this direction here, this line here will represent a new point on the vapor pressure curve. Okay. And you can see that the volumes are getting closer to each other. And of course, we could keep doing that as we approach the critical point. The difference in the saturated vapor and the saturated liquid get closer and closer. So really the, the distance of that line is giving this contrast in the, in the densities of the saturated phases. <clears throat> As that line distance approaches zero at the critical point, that ratio of densities approaches one. Okay, the two phase densities become equal. So this is kind of a three-dimensional image of of, um, of what we're talking about. It kind of has the pressure temperature diagram in it, but not. it's, it's, it's hard to see that, that vapor pressure curve here, um, because it's hard to read the pressure and temperatures on this three-dimensional scale. But is there anything that, that you get out of this or have questions about this, this uh, visualization of the, 
of the pressure temperature volume uh, condition. Everywhere it's gray in this figure, we have single phase, under what we call undersaturated single phase. Okay, so everywhere it's gray, we have single phase, what I refer to as undersaturated phase. And in reality, even though they put labels, gas, liquid, and so forth, you really have an undefined phase. You simply can say it is a single phase. And that would be the proper nomenclature. Well, you think this is, you know, just semantics and plain. But the thing is that in petroleum reservoirs, we often operate at conditions that are, that are out in this arbitrary, we really don't know if it's a liquid or a vapor. It has a viscosity of 0.1 centipoise. Is it a liquid or a vapor? We don't have any relationship with fluids that have 0.1 centipoise. Well, that's a lot lighter than water, but it's a lot more than gas. Okay? So you don't have any feelings for 0.1 centipoise type fluids. And a lot of the systems that we work with in petroleum reservoirs are out in this gray region initially. So we don't know what to call it. Gas or an oil, it might be in a sense both. So you should get used to, to, to using this, this term single phase gas, single phase oil. We will talk about how you can formally define the system as an oil an undersaturated oil or an undersaturated gas, but again, it's just a label we put on it for the regulatory officials. Um, they have some laws that depend whether you call it an oil or a gas reservoir, okay? Ownership is dictated by that. So we have to have these labels in the petroleum industry, and we have means by which to define gas and oil. But in reality, we're often operating in these conditions where the phase that exists, it's a single phase, it's an undersaturated, we may label it as a gas or an oil, but it's still an undersaturated phase. And it will have properties that you're not familiar with between gas-like and water-like or liquid-like. Okay? So this is one, one graphical image. It's not particularly one that's maybe as, as useful as you would think. Go to three dimensions, you, get, you need your three-dimensional your glasses to, work, to see them. This is another image of kind of the same thing. And I think this is a more successful image in, in uh, giving uh, at least semi-quantitative uh, this relationship between pressure and temperature. And what you see is along this line here, this is the exact vapor pressure curve. So you can actually track it. But interestingly, there is no line drawn on this image. The way this image was created, and I think it was created long before computer graphics, so you had some artist, uh, some graphics guy or girl, making each little small square some grade of, uh, uh, some shade of, of gray. Okay? And the shading, the degree of shading, is proportional with the density of the phase. Okay? So what you see is that, now this is not water, because, you know, it, it's, it's not water, it's some other component, I'm not sure what it is. I suppose we could go find it in the in the uh, table in Appendix A. It's it's probably a hydrocarbon. It has a, a critical temperature of about 210 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, if we go look for that in Appendix A, it's probably something around heptane, if I remember right. I'm not real sure. So here we got the. doesn't really matter, but just 
Okay, so the critical temperature, this is in Rankin. So if you subtract, so if you add, uh, what was it, 200, about 210 plus 460, that would be 670, about 670 Rankin, and 6, well, 660. See, 460 plus 210. So it looks like it, it's probably propane. Let's check the, the pressure. Critical pressure is about 600 degrees PSI, and that looks right. So this looks like it's propane. You know? You guys know who my brother is. Probably not. He's the famous guy. Nobody knows me, but, you know. My brother's the supposed king of grilling of Norway, okay? And some years back when I decided to start grilling, out of spite, you know, I, I didn't grill before. Um, basically, my daughter was buying so many of these one-time grills that I was like, you know, having trouble keeping up financially and throwing them away. So I said, you know, uh, Craig, his, his name, I said, you know, what kind, of, what kind of grill should I buy if I'm gonna go buy a grill? And of course, being the king of grilling, he, he said, you have to buy a coal grill. But you know, I knew about that from Oklahoma, that it was a lot of work. So the gas grill, you know, is what I went for. And that's basically burning propane. So that's our, our propane stuff. And the degree of shading here is, is proportional with the density, kind of inversely proportional with the volume. So what you see very clearly is that down here at the low, at the low pressures, you have this probably a thousand, if you go down to about 15 psi down here, probably at this point right here, there's a contrast of close to a thousand, certainly a hundred between the darkness level uh, above, or just above, and below. So the shading is giving the volumetric dimension, okay? In, albeit the inverse to the volume. So it's the density of the phase. And uh, so as you can see, on the lower side of this, it's very light. So if you go out here, and if we def de define the lower side where you're actually on this point, this being vapor and this being liquid, what you can say, anything that's dark is liquid-like, we're going to say, yeah, this is liquid-like out here, okay? And out here, this is vapor-like, okay? But it's not vapor, per se. See, the interesting thing is, is that we can move from where we see a, where we actually see vapor and liquid here. If we just hold it at, at whatever boiling temperature it is, if this was water, that would be a hundred degrees C, and we just increase the pressure, and you know we've got this what's very clearly liquid. You know, it's just becoming more and more compressed. Uh, viscosity is going from one to two centipoise. But then what we do is we start heating it you know, at a very high pressure, but then we start heating it, and all of a sudden you start getting light gray, okay? And then you lower the pressure at that high temperature, and everything starts getting lighter and lighter and lighter until you get down to here. It's very light. And then you can move back where you started from by lowering the temperature again, exactly to the same point you started. And in that path, you went from something you knew was liquid. You saw that little bubble of gas. As soon as you increase the pressure, the bubble disappeared. And then all of a sudden, you've just changed pressure and temperature. You're looking at this cell where you can see what's in there. You see nothing but single phase. And then all of a sudden, you see a drop appear a little drop of liquid, because on the underside of this, there's just one little drop at the bottom of the container. And nowhere in between did you know when you went from being a clearly defined liquid to a clearly defined vapor. So the question is, where did it go from being liquid to vapor? And there is really no good answer to that thermodynamically.
Okay. So anyway, I like this imagery of the pressure, volume, temperature behavior of a single component. A little better, it's a little less confusing, at least to me, than this three-dimensional uh, diagram. And by the way, this line where you have the same density level as you have at the critical point, if you kind of trace the line where it keeps that same level of gray, the same density, okay, this is what's referred to as an isocore line, okay, iso basically meaning that the density is constant. And this particular isocore is the density, this density at the critical point. So if you wanted, you could arbitrarily define liquid and vapor according to that, but it would be an arbitrary definition. It wouldn't be one that, that's formal. It would just be your definition of what's liquid and what's vapor. 